I apologise first of all for my deep gravelly voice. I woke up with a, a sore throat this morning. Um, why should um, uh, why are my party's climate change policies more effective? Well, firstly because uh, they make deep cuts, and uh, climate change is serious. And if we don't make deep cu cuts, then we will then we'll be in trouble, frankly. Um, we have practical ideas on how to achieve those deep cuts. Uh, we have based those ideas on very sound experience. Um, I chaired the, uh, the inquiry into Greenhouse and Australia's response to Kyoto uh, that reported in 2000. Um, we are convinced that uh, we should not go nuclear and we are sceptical about clean coal. But what we would do is uh, ratify Kyoto, uh, we should have done that um, uh, some long time ago, and take seriously the global effort and be in there helping to design the second round of commitments. Uh, we need to uh, set greenhouse targets, uh, we say, at 30% of 1990 levels by 2020, and somewhere between 60 and 90% by 2050. Now, I don't think we can be more certain than that, and uh, whilst other parties have been reluctant to strike a target at 2020, but to find one for 2050, we think that makes no sense, because the science is still uncertain. It may be we need to go to 100% uh, by 2050. Uh, we would uh, do black certificate uh, trading, which is a um, cap and trade emissions trading scheme by 2010, with all permits auctioned by after 2015. We would have green certificate trading and boost uh, MRET, mandated renewable energy target, 25% by 2020 and 50% uh, by 2030. We think that's uh, utterly doable. Uh, we would do uh, emissions trading for energy efficiency. And uh, we think it's possible to introduce a 20% energy efficiency target delivered through uh, that trading, creating a market for retrofit energy efficiency actions in residential, industrial and commercial sectors. Uh, we would require new power stations to have a greenhouse emissions intensity threshold of less than uh, 0.6 tonnes per megawatt hour. And this would rule out pretty much all of uh, Victoria's coal-fired power and uh, it would be uh, unlikely, I think, that most power stations around the country would comply. However, we think that's important. Uh, we have six, six star minimum energy performance standards for appliances, uh, development, demonstration and commercialisation of ultra-low and zero emission technology, including big scale renewable energy generation and energy storage. Um, our next speaker is Jacinta Collins from the ALP. Thanks. Thank you very much, Carolyn. I think it's a bit more helpful with people at the back if we do talk from here as well. Uh, so thank you again, Carolyn, uh, panel members, fellow candidates, ladies and gentlemen. I will argue today that only Kevin Rudd and a future Labor government is prepared to tackle climate change with real solutions. Federal Labor has a long-standing commitment to policies to address climate change. And Carolyn tonight referred to the problem as a crisis, and I got out of the car tonight to hear Kevin Rudd emphasising exactly that point. The core initiatives in Labor's comprehensive plan to deal with economic and environmental challenge of dangerous climate change are as follows. Firstly, establishing market-based initiatives to reduce greenhouse gases through an emissions trading scheme by 2010. Secondly, demand-side management measures assisting households to contribute to reducing carbon emissions and other energy savings. And thirdly, supply-side measures including support for zero emission and low emission technologies through a national clean coal initiative and a strong re renewable energy target 20% by 2020. Coal crime. After 11 years under the Howard government talking of coal crime, renewable energy contributes less than <coughs> sorry, renewable energy contributes less to Australia's economic supply 9.5% than it did in 1997 when it was 10.5%. The Howard government is now offering too little, too late and proposing nuclear which we don't support. Labor will immediately ratify the Kyoto Protocol and the problem is global. So the Kyoto framework, which allows for developing countries to take on progressively more stringent commitments over time, is important. But this will only be achieved 
if developed countries like Australia show leadership to leverage better outcomes from developing countries. Labor will provide national leadership also, rather than the delay, denial, inaction and scepticism that has set us backwards. <laughs> Labor will also invest in urban and rural water projects and ensure a 30% target of wastewater is recycled nationally by 2015. Labor's capacity and alternative approach is best demonstrated by the process incorporating the Garno Review and involving cooperative work with state and territory governments to bring both the national MRET, or uh, Renewable Energy Target, the minimum target, and existing state-based targets into a single national renewable energy scheme and to establish the framework and interim targets towards the target of 60% reduction in emissions by 2050. But activity at a local level is also important. Local communities and organisations such as Lighter Footprints have kept these issues to the fore with debates such as this and the Kuyong, sorry, in Kuyong, and the recent debate at the Hawthorne Town Hall, which was addressed by our candidate, Dr Ken Harvey. Richard Di Natale from the Greens. Thank you very much for coming and it's a great pleasure to be here talking about climate change as one of the few parties that have been campaigning on this issue for decades, not because of political expediency but because it is a looming catastrophe. On the first issue, the issue of targets, the Greens have strong long-term and medium-term targets, an 80% reduction by 2050 and a 30% reduction by 2020. Neither of the major parties have committed to a medium-term target, despite all the evidence telling us we need action on this and action urgently. Cap and trade is effective only when we set targets that are deep and will result in immediate action. So to argue for a cap and trade scheme is one thing, but to not have that matched by binding medium and long-term targets means that a cap-and-trade scheme would be completely ineffective. Uh, the Greens are the only party advocating for energy efficiency as the primary means of addressing climate change, and it's why we are going to provide energy audits to every household in Australia, not just for new homes, but for existing homes, so that we can determine what sort of retrofitting can be done to produce not just an environmental but an economic payback inside 10 years. Solar hot, waters on every, solar hot water system on every roof, insulation, double glazing, all done through energy audits and providing the money up front so that households don't have that financial barrier and having that money paid back for those retrofitting uh, devices over time through savings in energy bills. Strong target, mandatory renewable energy target. The Greens are proposing for a minimum 25% mandatory renewable energy target for the year 2020. The coalition target is 15% and it includes brown coal. The Labor Party target is better uh, but doesn't go far enough. On the issue of coal, the Greens don't believe that government should be subsidising the coal industry. The Labor Party is subsidising the coal industry to the tune of half a billion dollars for technology that is yet unproven and in all likelihood won't go any way to addressing the problem. We don't believe in nuclear power as a solution to the problem and therefore we don't support uranium mining in this country at all. We believe in binding international agreements and we need to be sitting at the table to ensure that we're involved front and centre in the next international agreement that involves all countries. Thank you.